as human beings, if we want to survive and stop being a slaver planet, we got to come together. Everybody's got to learn to dance. All right, here we go. Hit the button, baby. This is a Thor News presentation. Stay cool. <laughs> Thor News presents. Darkness. Darkness is coming. What the hell? Science? Are you trying to fear monger me? Darkness, everybody! Darkness is ready! August 21st, 2017. Where will you be when the sun disappears? Oh, it's just an eclipse. But a magic one. Sage is beautiful. Alright, I want to talk about something new, but it's old, I guess. Dinosaurs. Talking about dead things. Man, why you gotta be so cryptic, science? It's like you never get any nookie or something. Nookie is a scientific term for love making. Alright, monkey see, monkey smash. Are monkeys making hominem style stone tools? Okay, that is not the article we're reading. We're reading Dinos Down Under. And another reason I'm doing this article is because this is basic science again telling you there is life on Saturn's moon Titan. See, they're called Titanosaurs in Australia because we got tons of life on Titan. Don't believe me? Well, that's your prerogative. Cue Bobby Brown. Newly discovered Australian Titanosaur Savannosaurus Elitorium goes for a stroll. Can you hear the thunder? Yes, of course I can. Meet Wade and Matilda. Matilda. Reminds me of the, profe reminds me of the professional. It's an awesome movie by Luke Besson. Ain't that right, Wes Anderson? I don't know, Wes. Do you like action movies? Anyway, Rushmore and Royal Tenenbaums, two of my favorites. Sidebar, in reverse. The newest superstars from Australia, bigger than the Hemsworth brothers. See, they're referring to me already. Although, I'm not a Hemsworth. One of the Hemsworth, I believe, plays me in a movie. <sighs> These two titanosaurs are more than the sum of the fossilized parts. And did you know they've never found a fossil in oil or petroleum? Sage told me that. Their discovery helps us piece together how the biggest and brawniest Dinosaurs ended up down under. Dun dun dun. Paleontologist Stephen Propat and colleagues publishing today in Scientific Reports describe Wade and Matilda from Queensland went in formation. The hell is that? The fossiliferous deposits have offered up a number of other dinosaurs, insects, fish, and other critters from the heart of the Cretaceous about 95 to 98 million years ago. Wade, the team's nickname for the specimen they describe as a new species, Savannosaurus eleutherium, is one of the most complete Australian examples of sauropod ever found. And within the long-necked, long-tailed herbivorous sauropod family, Wade falls into the titanosaur category. These were the biggest of the big. As one happy dude. I would make a comment that looks like he's trying to hump the invisible dinosaur, but I don't want to be disrespectful. And we need more happiness on the planet. Is he floating in zero-g? Oh, he's laying down the dinosaur bones. Okay. Sorry, Mr. Parlepat. I know science is serious. <laughs> I don't mean to be such a immature jerk. And you know what? My ratings would probably do better. People like their serious science. Tough shit. Wade's formal species name, Elitorium, I've repeated that like eight times now, is in honor of David Elliott. Are you batting your article, man? The rancher and paleontological superfan who found the first fragments of the skeleton while out mustering sheep back in 2005. Yes, it took more than a decade to dig out Wade. Nickname for the late paleontologist, Mary Wade. And prepare the fossilized bones, including the painstaking process of removing the hard rock encasing them. Dem bones, dem bones, make up one of the most complete sauropod skeletons ever unearthed in Australia. I think, uh, Albert Pike mentioned something about this. Wade is not the biggest of the big in the titanosaur department. Some titans checked in with lengths of more than 100 feet, but down under dinosaur was just under 50 feet long. A respectable length, she said, for what is essentially a Cretaceous cow. What? Okay. Now it's like Flintstones and dinosaur burgers. I don't know, dinosaurs aren't very cute. But I, I don't think I'd want to eat them. Because you know how we don't we don't eat the cute animals. Among the new Titans, noble characteristics, a wide ribcage and hips. The hips were at least a meter wide. Which must have made shopping for jeans a nightmare. It's bad enough when I tell jokes about science. But it's much worse when science tries to tell jokes about science. Hefty hips are also seen in Diamantinosaurs. Found in the same environment as Savannosaurus. And another Aussie sauropod. The previously described Win ton o titan Matilda's a real head case. Waltzing along with Wade into the scientific literature comes Matilda, the team's other find. I smell a children's book coming on. Matilda was a little bigger than Wade, probably 50 to 60 feet, tip to tip, and her species isn't new. The first partial diamantinosaurus 
Tina Sars Matilde turned up in 2009 in the same Winton formation. But what makes Matilda such a find is that while she doesn't have much of a body, she does have some brains. I got lucky. I got a woman who's got a hell of a body and a hell of a brain. And almost too much brains. Or rather, a nearly complete brain case. The first bits of sauropod skull ever found in Australia. Having the skull helps researchers determine which species are ancestral or closely related. Once the family tree is known, they can work their way through the fossil records geographically to figure out how sauropods dispersed across continents. Ah, oh, they're cute. Asterisk. Another reason having the skull is huge. Scans of the brain case may help researchers learn details about the dinosaur's hearing, sight, and other senses. Wait, what have we learned in this article? Nothing? Okay, great. Arch of the Titanosaurus. Dun, 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 dun. Wait, did Matilda offer researchers some additional insight into how and when these giants made it to Australia? Spaceships, man. Biodegradable spaceships. It's a puzzle paleontologists have been trying to piece together for decades. Maybe it happened before the Pangaea split. The fossil record hasn't been much help. Only South America, particularly the southern region of Patagonia, has a decent assemblage of sauropod fossils spanning just about the entire Cretaceous. On other continents, sauropod, including the Titanosaur, finds have been hit or miss. This suggests to paleontologists that the distribution of sauropods changed as the supercontinent of Gondwana broke up and today's comparatively puny southern hemisphere continents went their own way. Finding Wade and Matilda has helped researchers plot sauropod diversity in Australia and determine their most likely ancestors. According to the team's conclusions, it appears most likely that South American sauropods took advantage of a period of warming about 100 million years ago that would have made Antarctica a comfortable continent to cross without a parka. Science joke number two. The researchers behind Wade and Matilda readily agree that the route and timing of sauropod migration to Australia is not yet carved in stones. It's more penciled in, and we'll need a lot more fossils from a lot more of the southern hemisphere to know for sure. If you want to know more about the messy crustaceous conundrum the current fossil record presents, definitely give today's paper a read. It's open access, yay, and the introduction neatly sums up the challenges paleontologists face figuring out dino diversity and dispersal during the golden age of these thunder lizards. All right, keep your eyes on the road, your hands upon the wheel. God bless everyone. Dino days are back again. Peace out. And